Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. Unfortunately, I'm still not quite healed up. I've got the cold sitting here right in the back of my throat, uh, so it affects the voice a bit. Uh, but the show must go on, so I'm recording this video, um, and then we'll see how I feel tomorrow, and then yeah, I'll record another one tomorrow, or a bunch tomorrow, depending on how I feel. But at this point, this is the one for recording. This particular story is called My Friend Stephen, written by Battlelox underscore. Stephen was a good friend of mine. You often find that members of the galactic community dislike humans almost by default. They'll point out that humanity has a history of xenophobia, even within their own species, and that their hatred of the unknown kept them from reaching the galactic stage for a long time. You'll hear about how they are one of three species that have hostile first contact encounter, and of the three that inexplicably, they are the only ones to have later earned a seat on the council. You'll hear that they can be rampunctious, annoying, and incredibly stubborn, even when faced with obvious evidence of their wrongness. And I always respond with, uh, you've never met Stephen. Stephen was quite a lad of 17 human years when he first came aboard the Sojourner. Captain Eriks was reluctant to take him on, but the engineering deck was quite insistent that they could find a new ship if they had to scrub the floors one more time. When faced with losing a solid set of engineers and hiring a young human, the choice was obvious. Despite the crew's misgivings about the boy, he quickly became a welcome addition to the ship, almost a mascot as much as a deckhand. We soon learned that rather than just being a silent, moody sort, he was keen and extremely quick to learn. By the time he was on his tenth trade route, he was capable of serving as a fairly competent member of any of the decks, and more than once we were glad for his capabilities. The only complaints, of course, came when he assisted the cook, though almost all council-recognized species ate the same general sorts of nutrients, tastes varied wildly, and none were more controversial than human preferences. The first day Stephen cooked a meal, the crew nearly rioted. What did you do? Captain Eric's hissed as he spat his food into a nearby drain and began to rinse his mouth out with water. I... I just added some spice, Stephen replied, confused. It hurts, the navigator complained. My mouth is burning. I... I don't understand, Stephen said. It, is it the garlic or, or maybe the... You put garlic in this? I asked in between bouts of scrubbing my tongue. But yeah, it, it, it adds flavor. I smacked my lips a few times. No, that's not it. I mean, I can taste the foul stench of garlic, but this, this is worse. It's like a fire in my mouth, like alcohol that isn't dilute enough. Fire? Uh, that would be the cayenne, then. Uh, is that a problem? Stephen asked. Smads, yes, it's awful. What's in this cayenne stuff? Uh, well, uh, Stephen hesitated. Cayenne is a, uh, a pepper... It has capsaicin in it. Capsaicin? You mean the bioweapon capsaicin? The captain asked. Are you feeding us poison? No, 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 it's not a poison, Stephen protested. It, it just burns. And why is that a good thing? It's, well, enjoyable? You enjoy pain? I asked. Uh, not exactly, Stephen replied. It's, uh, he waved his hands around, lost for words. I don't care what it is, Eric said. Don't put that shit in our food ever again. Understood? Y yes, Captain, Stephen said miserably. That, for the most part, was the end of Stephen's work in the kitchen other than simple prep work. For the greater part of a day, he was quite panicked about the misstep. Relax, Stephen, I told him the next night. Just lay low and do your job. Captain's not about to fire someone for a single mistake. He, he thinks I poisoned him. Stephen replied. I laughed. <laughs> You're not the first off, even the tenth alien he accused of poisoning him. He's a paranoid fellow, our captain. Now I can get fired. I need this job. Swan, Stephen. Calm down. You're the most versatile crew member we've had here in two or three dozen cycles, I said, patting him on the shoulder. Really? Really? Engineering hasn't let anyone untrained work their deck since Elian. 
and she had four arms. Just don't let him know that you're not a colonial. Stephen's eyes widened. I'm... I'm... not? I haven't met a single human from the colonies that doesn't know how much aliens hate garlic. It's common knowledge. Uh, Pa... He, he can't know, Stephen whispered. He would never hire an Earth human. I don't think you'd mind as much as you'd think, I replied. But I'll keep your secret if you're that worried about it. Thanks, Pa, Stephen said. He lapsed into silence for a month as we cleaned the mess hall. So, I said, so? You think a bioweapon is a spice? It's from an Earth plant, Stephen replied, exasperated. Humans have eaten hot peppers for ages. My dad had some particularly nasty ones that were a hundred times worse than the one we had last night. That's insane, I replied. It is not painful for you guys or something. Kind of like how you don't understand how absolutely vile garlic is. No, it hurts. Just, it's just, just fun? Uh, you, the pain is fun. Yes, uh, kind of. You humans are weird, I decided. I'm not even sure the rest of us are capable of choosing to have a painful experience, let alone enjoying one. Stephen frowned. Y y you can't just avoid pain, can you? Why would you not? I asked, befuddled. Well, what about exercise or, uh, or any medical procedures involving needles? Your doctors hurt you? Not intentionally, I mean. Sometimes they need to inject medicine or test blood for disease. Stuff like that. My brows furrowed. You humans are insane. I'm going to bed. For the longest time, I thought nothing of the human pension. Pain. All intelligent species felt pain. Sooner or later, one of them was bound to be dumb enough to ignore it, and humanity certainly fit the ticket of dumb. It certainly explained their prodigious history of violence and war, but that was irrelevant to interstellar trade. I discarded the knowledge as quirk of their physiology. Interesting, but certainly of no practical application. And then the ship was boarded. None of us had given the slightest thought to piracy in many cycles. It was a practice unheard of in council space, given that any perpetrators of piracy were subject to summary execution and were almost always found. Unfortunately, these pirates did not get the memo. Our unarmed and untrained crew was overwhelmed in a heartbeat. We sat, tied, bound, helpless in a hold as we watched the pirates execute our captain, ransack the hold, and find the hidden vault of credit, the location of which was given up right before Eryx's untimely demise. They promised us that we would escape this encounter with our lives if we just sat still. Stephen did not listen. Unlike the rest of us, Stephen struggled against the cuffs that bound his hands. Stephen alone broke the bones in one of his hands to slide the cuff off. And when the pirate guarding us turned his attention away for a moment, Stephen tackled him, took his weapon, and killed him. Then, when the rest of the pirates came to investigate the disturbance, Stephen took the same weapon and gunned down a dozen of them, causing the rest to flee our ship. And it was Stephen who, with his last few breaths, freed us from our binds to fly back to safety. Few even know that humanity has a tolerance for pain. Of those few, most accounted to stupidity, to eons of air violence and strife and war on Earth. They think of humanity as brutes, quick to anger and incapable of acting for the greater good. But they didn't know my friend Stephen. End of story. Story number two, Human Weapons, written by Shadow of a Person. First contact should, perhaps, have been a much grander affair. Our stories told of grand first contact fleets, carefully chosen tests of merit, grand invasions, and some species even received those. The Galactic Assembly had a detailed first contact protocol spanning 500 pages of dense legalese. It has been used thrice. Twice more, a species invaded an uncontacted species wholesale. This was frowned upon and hardly worth the effort, unless one was on the brink of extinction. Most got the same welcome we got. A pirate, down on their luck, tried to pillaging from established races, decided humanity looked appealing. The punishment for contacting an uncontacted species was death. 
or life imprisonment. So was the punishment for piracy. So it kept happening. Humanity was thus thrust into the galactic community, having passed four of the 333 tests the Galactic Assembly prescribed the news entrant to be contacted. This was marginally above average. Humanity was largely unremarkable on the galactic stage, more peaceful than most military, more aggressive economically, an unusual FTL system. We soon grew richer than most, but never even approached the splendor of the Devani or the Grothashian. We were still rich enough to target. The Grothashian had acquired their wealth through less than savory means. Colonization, we would call it. The Galactic Assembly had almost 5,000 pending cases against them, a low point in the years since they had joined. The Grotashian lost almost every one, but the punishment never did eclipse the gains, and the Grotashian, being the Assembly's foremost military power, vetoed every attempt to increase it, and so they kept invading. Eventually they set their eyes on us. A Cassus Belli was established over some triviality. It would never stand up in court. But it would be decades before it saw trial. And so an invasion fleet of 5,000 ships, fighters excluded, showed up in orbit of Earth and demanded surrender. Earth sent a single ship to respond. Humanity was not much for ostentatious fleets. Stand down and leave human space immediately. The Grotashian commander laughed. It had been aeons since anyone had put up a fight. But the Grotashian military was still the grandest in the galaxy and their training was more than rigorous. This was all true. The Grotashian navy was the grandest by far, the most intimidating by a country mile, but the strongest, well. The Grotashian ships did not bother to respond to the human ultimatum. They opened fire. Their shots hit home immediately, around five centimeters beyond their gun barrels, in fact. Tungsten cubes were ripped apart by force that would destroy a warship. Humanity did not mourn the loss of their tungsten cubes. Who would? Human FDL was, at this range, almost perfectly precise. It had, after all, been developed to place transistors even more compactly and scaled up from there. Stand down and leave human space immediately. This time, perhaps, the demand should have had more weight. But the Grotashian had not fought a war outside of training in aeons, so they kept going like it was a training exercise. Evasive maneuvers started immediately. Particle beams hummed to life. Mass drivers charged up. The human ship did not move, but it did get slightly lighter. In the command post of the lead Grotashian ship sat a small black cylinder. It had not been there a second previously. It was not there a second later. But that second, oh, what a second. Twenty of the Grotashian's finest command staff died in that second. The next, it appeared in the engineering rooms, Fifty of the Grotashian's best engineers died. The average Grotashian ship had a dozen rooms. Perhaps five were occupied during battle. The human ship carried a thousand drones. The battle took only half a minute. Five thousand ships became five thousand tombs. Ornate and gold encrusted. The grandest, most intimidating collection of tombs in the galaxy. The human ship grew slightly heavier once again as a thousand drones returned to the hangar once more and returned to Earth. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catull, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.